This is the Comics Alternative Kickstarter, discovering Madness in Crowds, the teeming mind of Harrison Katie. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Comics Alternative Kickstarter. This is the weekly program where I talk with a comics-related Kickstarter creator about a project that they currently have ongoing. And this week, I have as my guest someone who is or should be familiar with Comics Alternative listeners. And in fact, they sh- he should be familiar <laughs> to, to anyone with an interest in comics, uh, Dennis Kitchen. Dennis, how you doing? Hi, Derek. Doing great. And it wasn't that long ago that you and I talked on the podcast uh, back in early March for Will Eisner Week. I had you on the show. And, and of course, we talked about Will Eisner. Right. But this time around, you're here for a completely different reason. And that's because you're part of a current Kickstarter campaign, Madness in Crowds, the Teeming Mind of Harrison Cady. That's right. He was an amazing cartoonist and illustrator who started uh, around the late 1890s. And the period I'm focusing on in this big book project takes it up into the 1920s with some examples later. But uh, the first 25 years or so of his career are just astonishing. Now, this is going to be coming out from Beehive Books, and I've had both Josh and Mail, is that how you pronounce her name, Mail? Mail. Mail, on the show before, on a Kickstarter show, about a previous project that they had going on. And I'm wondering about the connection between you and Beehive Books. Sure. Well, I've been friends with uh, Josh in particular for a long time, gotten to know Mail. I deeply respect the... uh, high production quality they put into their books and the design's amazing. They probably were on to promote the uh, Herbert Crowley book, um, which is uh, setting the pace. In fact, the same designer for that book is doing the Harrison Katie. This is going to be an oversized book with lots of bells and whistles for those who can afford to go for the the expensive version. But even the basic book itself is going to be gorgeous. So I'm I'm very happy to be associated with Beehive. Yeah. And in fact, when I did have Josh and Mayel on last year for a Kickstarter show, in fact, it was one of our first ones. It was for, shall we say, let's say a, a much more modest project. It was lab issue number zero. Oh, uh, and, and I mentioned that because you were talking about the high production value now. That kind of work went into lab, but this is a completely different beast, Madness and Crowds. And I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what people can expect sure. in this package, because it is, uh, it is a lot. Well, it's a, a big book. It's, uh, I think, 11 by 14 inches. Um, it's going to be uh, just packed with uh, amazing illustrations. I... Uh, I'm writing the text for it. That'll be mm, 10,000 words or so. It's, it's mainly a picture book. And um, Katie's um, work, as I mentioned, from roughly 1900 into 1920 or so is the focus. The old Life magazine, not the one most people remember, the big photograph Life magazine that started in the late 30s. The old Life magazine was a, a humor magazine packed with cartoons and and illustrations, and um, it it ran from the late 1800s up until again about the late 1930s when I guess they sold the name and the format totally changed. But um, they used to have a, a centerfold um, in every issue. It was a weekly. And uh, Charles Dana Gibson often did the centerfold. He was the the big star illustrator of his day. And Harrison Cady was the other. And these were jam-packed with detail. I joked to Josh Amiel that really readers needed a magnifying glass to appreciate all the detail. And so they obliged by, in one of the deluxe editions, you actually get a magnifying glass built into the the, uh, bookcase. So... um, his his work um, that I love the most uh, is, is a, a world called Bugville and Beetleberg and different names where these anthropomorphic insects and bugs were 
basically taking the place of humans. They're beautifully drawn, lovingly drawn. This is a guy who loved nature. And uh, so uh, the passing parade of humanity was seen through the eyes of these uh, bugs. But he also did a lot of amazing things with actual humans. Uh, he did a lot of book covers. Um, he, for many years, collaborated with the children's book writer Thornton Burgess, though what I'm focusing on really precedes even that. Um, the amount of work he put in is so painstakingly detailed that he must have worked around the clock. I, I don't know how this guy slept. Hmm. Now, you know, of course, I'm familiar with your deep interests in comics history and illustration history. But when it comes to Harrison Cady, what is your background in terms of his work? I mean, when did he first come into your awareness? You know, I was relatively young when I, I, I can't even remember the first time I discovered it, but um, I probably didn't even know his name or recognize it at first. I just saw these old cartoons with bugs, and I loved the way they were drawn. And at some point, I looked at the fine print, figured out his name. And back in the pre-internet days, you know, I would just find old magazines at flea markets and uh Got the word out to some rare book dealers, and uh, a couple of them would oblige me by periodically sending a package in the mail that had uh, things by Katie. And sometimes they were coverless, and I would just take the tear sheets and start assembling them into albums. So now I have basically five albums packed with Katie's art and uh, have acquired a few originals. I've talked to collectors who have other originals, so as as much as possible, we're going to have images shot from the original art, which is magnificent. The bulk of the book will be from tear sheets from these old magazines that now are 100 to 125 years old. When you and I first began com to communicate about doing this Kickstarter episode, you hadn't yet reached your goal. But I've checked more recently and congratulations, you guys have reached your Kickstarter goal. So that's great. Yep. Yeah, with uh, still uh, almost two weeks to go, we hope to get it higher, but the minimal goal has been set, which means that it'll actually happen. If we can raise more, that would be great. Uh, the author won't complain. But, um, but yeah, I was worried, you know, with these things, sometimes you sweat it out right up to the last day. So it's a relief not to go through that, uh, <laughs> that kind of uh, a grueling end run. And we should mention that the deadline for people to back Madness and Crowds, the teeming mind of Harris and Katie, is Tuesday, June 5th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Okay. And uh, I would just urge those who are serious to look ASAP because already one or two of the bells and whistles are sold out. So, um, you know. Um, but the basic book itself is is amazing, and I don't think anyone will feel um, it was a bad investment. Even if you've never heard of this artist's name before, uh, if, if you're a serious comics fan, just take a look. All you have to do is take, honestly, five seconds, glance at these illustrations, and you're going to be sold. Mm -hmm. If you're not sold, then fine, you know. <laughs> but it's just mesmerizing. Uh, the work will just draw you in. Um and you'll understand why I'm an enthusiast. And, and there are many others, too. I've been getting emails and calls from all kinds of artists who are thrilled this is coming out. Just in the last day or two, um, Bill Stout is a huge fan. Tony Millionaire, Gary Panter. Gosh, I'm forgetting offhand. So many um, that I didn't know were fellow enthusiasts. So... Katie, for many years, is what I call an artist's artist, which is, um, you know, more artists are probably aware of him than the average fan. And once this book is out and in collector's hands and some libraries, hopefully, you know, his legacy will be renewed. Um, he's been sadly forgotten for the most part for for too many years. Well, let's talk about some of the reward levels that people can back this project for. Um, tell us some of the basics here. Sure. I think for um, for a hundred dollars, you get the the basic uh, hardcover book, which is a big, thick hardcover book that's that's gorgeous. For I think uh, I think uh, boy, I don't have it in front of me, but I think the uh, the slipcase edition is uh, 
250 or 350 and you get the slip case. There's an edition that I think is sold out where I actually draw his bugs in my own style. I think that's gone, but there's one where you get three-dimensional bugs. That one's pretty pricey, but you get the book, the bugs, the drawing by me, a tear sheet from a magazine from over 100 years ago. Um, and then there's some where you get the a 3D poster by Katie with 3D glasses. You get the postcards. Um, gosh, I'm forgetting offhand. I should have the... Uh, <laughs> the Kickstarter in front of me, but but um, you know that's part of the fun is to go and see what the bonuses are. There's lots of uh, of sample illustrations in both black and white and color, and they're a teaser. If you like what's up there, you know, multiply it uh, by a, a high factor, and you'll get more of the same. It was tough just even picking uh, prototypical images because there's so many that Josh and Myel and I love. So we had to flip a lot of coins um, uh, to show the the dozen or so that are that are uh, on the Kickstarter site. For those who are also um, political, you should know that that Katie, in many ways, uh, was a progressive in his day. He was a big supporter of women's rights way back before women had the vote. He was anti-war. He was anti-capitalist. Um, and he had some flaws, too, which I, I go into in the book. I won't elaborate on now. Nobody's perfect. But uh, um, just from a draftsman's position alone, um, he's very alluring. And if you are inclined to care about the, the, the history, the times, the era he was working in, you see they reflect a lot of the political views of the time that he held. It's not just... Um, illustrations with funny animals and, and people. Um, his stuff ranges from highly whimsical and hilarious to deadly serious stuff with corpses on battlefields. Mm. So he was um, <clears throat> somebody I would also say was an artist with uh, the ability to have diverse styles. So if you had seen one of his very serious editorial cartoons and not noticed the signature, you would really probably never connect that to the guy who was doing the funny bug cartoons, you know, the more whimsical kinds of things. And you mentioned, you were talking earlier about the various reward levels. Uh, you do have kind of quite a widespread uh, of, of levels. So people can back this from anywhere between $10 to 700 And That's although for $10, they get the postcards. These are what, four, four by six postcards that feature Katie's artwork. I believe so. Yes. Yeah. It's 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 a way of saying thanks for those who want to help who can't uh, dig deep enough in the pocket, and and I, and I understand that. Believe me. Uh, yeah. When I was a young collector, there are a lot of things I couldn't afford either. Right. And then you do offer the digital edition for 25 bucks. But, you know, right. as you were describing earlier and the kind of – given the kind of books that Beehive does, the Pledge of 100 to get the actual physical book, which is 10 by 14 hardcover edition, uh, is really where it's at. I think so. I mean, obviously I'm prejudiced, but it, it will be um, a mind-boggling book and and i i dare say too remember this isn't going to be a very high run book uh, if you're a bibliophile you love it you have it on your shelf but if you know someday you're down to the last can of beans it's the kind of thing you can put on ebay and get more than your money back i'm confident because this is something that in the not too distant future will probably be unavailable and it'll bring premium prices so what seems expensive now i i, I would argue is really a modest investment and uh, also could be a great gift item for somebody who you know loves old illustrators and um, loves the loves the kind of book you can stare at for hours. Uh, that I guarantee. If you break down your reading pleasure and divide it into that hundred dollars, um, <laughs> it's going to seem really cheap because you'll pour over some of these pages. It'll be several minutes just to absorb what's in it, and then when you come back the next time, you'll see things you didn't see the first time. And if you didn't get the edition with the magnifying glass, you better have a magnifying glass because there's so much going on. And that's not to say it's hard on the eyes. It's very pleasant. It's just imagine yourself flying above a, a crowd scene and then zooming down. And within that crowd, there are all kinds of activities, amusing things going on. Just uh, you are 
basically the reader's eye is like the bird's eye view and you just dive in and then you go to the next page and dive in again and sometimes you're going to get a worm's eye view. Um, but it's just a richness of imagery. So there you have it, the Dennis Kitchen guarantee uh, for speculation and enjoyment and appreciation. You bet. So, Dennis, uh, I very much appreciate you talking with me, and everyone can back Madness in Crowds, the teeming mind of Harrison Katie, but you need to do so before Tuesday, June 5th at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Dennis, good luck with this, and I look forward to talking with you again in the near future, I'm sure. Thanks, Derek. Always a pleasure. And I'll be back next Saturday with another comics-related Kickstarter project. Until then, enjoy your weekend.